Morocco's ruling Justice and Development Party has suffered great losses in the recent parliamentary elections, according to preliminary results announced on Thursday. The PJD went from holding 125 seats in parliament to only 12. The vote has seen the rise of the main liberal and centre-right parties in the country. The moderate PJD has been in power since 2011 following the pro-democracy protests of the Arab Spring. Let's uh, get more on this from Sami Hamdi in London. He is the editor-in-chief at the International Interest. Sami, thanks for joining us here on TRT World. Now tell me, what uh, do these results mean for the future of the political landscape of Morocco? It means uh, a successful return of the king. It means the king has successfully navigated the Arab Spring. It means the king, who was uh, very worried about the, uh, the Arab Spring protests that took place in the beginning, uh, of 2011, uh, it means that the King of Morocco has successfully managed to afford concessions when he needed to and then take back the power for himself. The King, in the beginning, decided to afford the space and empower Parliament as a concession to the Moroccan people who were upset with decades of uh, the King's uh, rule in terms of its inability to produce uh, the uh, employment opportunities, the social mobility. Uh, dealing with poverty and tackling some of the economic uh, crises. The king initially put forward those concessions. The people believed that the Freedom and Justice uh, and Development Party, or i.e. the Muslim Brotherhood, would be the ones, the lightning rod, they would be the ones who would be able to force the king to really uh, bring about those developments. But it appears that the Muslim Brotherhood, as a result of a number of regional dynamics or the like, ended up merely implementing policies that the Moroccan people had voted them in to resist whether that's with regards to uh, strengthening the French language in Morocco, whether that's with regards to normalization of ties, which the Islamist government was silent on and uh, seemed to uh, welcome it in the spirit of trying to hold on to power. Right. So what we're seeing is, a, uh, is twofold. What we're seeing is a large number of apathy towards the parliamentary elections. And right. we're also seeing people essentially saying uh, that we no longer have faith in these people who we trusted to push back against the king, and there's no hope left for this political system. Right. Now, Sami, I understand that final results have not been announced yet, but the PJD is already accusing rivals of uh, buying votes. Is that likely to change the outcome of the, of the elections? I think it's important to, uh, to, to put uh, what's taking place into context, in the, particularly with regard to this accusation. The king over the past 10 years, as he's gotten stronger and as parliament has become more unpopular and as the Muslim Brotherhood have become more unpopular in failing to deliver on their policies, the king has embarked on steps to weaken the parliament. And part of that has been introducing a new election law which bases the number of results based on registered voters, not on the number of votes cast. And no other country in the world does this. This means that uh, the, where the, the Freedom and Justice and Development Party got 125 seats in, 20, in uh, 2016, they would have actually got 80 seats or 70 seats uh, under this new system. So there is this attempt to dilute parliament, to further paralyze it, to make people hate it even more. With regards to the accusations of buying votes and the like, the reality is this is a phenomenon across the Arab Spring, and it would not be surprising to see it in Morocco. In Tunisia, with, uh, with the home place of the Arab Spring, we saw certain parties delivering cardboard boxes with macaroni and cheese and, and water and, and fizzy drinks and providing cigarette packets to people in exchange uh, for their votes. And this was done on a national scale, a widespread scale, and the Electoral Commission didn't know how to deal uh, with this sort of phenomenon. But it's important to stress that with 96% of the votes counted, and it appears the Freedom and Justice and Development Party right. uh, appear to have only about 12 seats or less than right. 20 seats, I think it's more than just uh, votes being bought. I think it's more than just the king having changed the electoral laws uh, in his favor. It is about this idea that they've been, been in power for 10 years and they failed to understood why they were voted for in the first place. They were voted right. to push back against the king, not to accommodate him. They were voted to take power for the people, not to allow the king to restore that power for himself. And they ended up becoming part of the system. And the king succeeded in offering concessions in the beginning, uh, driving the people to hate the parliament. And that was, of course, compounded by parliament's inability to deliver. And now the king is finally a resurgent, taking that power for himself. He has two allies now who have secured the right. largest number, number of seats. He is in firm control of the economic policy, firm control of the foreign policy. The people don't see an avenue through which to enact change after the failure of the last 10 years. So the king essentially says the people now have no hope left. 
that's good, I'm strong, I'm back in power, that's perfectly great, and there's no lightning rod anymore for any such Arab Spring protest. And in the wider context, and I'll finish on this point, in the wider context, this is perhaps a, a dark day for the Islamist movement in the region, generally, given that Tunisia, Qais Saeed, has done a coup against the parliament in which right. they had the largest share. Sisi did his coup in 2013, and it appears he is getting ever stronger. Turkey and Qatar, which are the parties that supported the, the Arab Spring, have decided to reconcile with Egypt, UAE, and Saudi Arabia, certainly. the anti-democracy axis. Right. I mean, many developments taking place uh, in Morocco. Uh, certainly, the next uh, few days are going to be extremely crucial for the country. Sami Hamdi in London, thank you very much for talking to us here on TRT World.